the Marshall's uh, Sult 1809. Um, this is May 10th. Um, the, the French won the initiative. Um, then we drew event chits. The French drew um, uh, Major Dulong. And uh, this is not uh, not marked with an asterisk or star, so it does not have to be played immediately. I'll just hang on to that um, for now. Um, I think, okay, so we go on to the operations phase. Um, I am going to activate a stack. Um, I think I'm going to... If this force is sufficiently strong, infantry, infantry, artillery, 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 so that's good enough. That force, well, I guess I don't have to turn it over yet. Oops. <laughs> this force is going to, uh, so how do I do this? Technically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to activate it through movement, is, is the wording of the, the rules. Um, they are, uh, th this is the command test. There we go. <laughs> Good. Five. They have a line of, uh, communications back to the commander-in-chief, Sult there. So, they add one. Uh, they're not only cavalry. We just looked at them. They're, they're infantry and artillery, including one horse artillery. Um, I think that's, oh, and there is no subordinate leader with them to add a strategic value. So it is six. So they have their full movement allowance, but I guess they're limit. Okay, I guess they're limited by the artillery, anyways, of four. But no worries. We only have one um, connection to move. It's a, it's a uh, road. Yeah, it's a road um, connection. So they are going to try to force passage. Um, of the, the Anglo Allied force there. So I guess I have to do the movement first. So I guess I here I'll do it this way. I I'll move it to the area. Um okay so that's fatigue. Oh 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 I guess to know how many I guess I can go in order. The first one is just for crossing the um the um the connection there that's they draw one fatigue here one fatigue then okay first thing is the strength so actually at this point i do need to know the number of steps so um each artillery is one there are three artillery so that's three and there are two infantry they are renault and foy renault and foy so that's um one two three Four, five, six. So it's six plus six infantry steps plus three artillery steps, which is less than ten. So they don't draw an extra one for troop density or force size. Um, they don't have a, a has combated marker on them. They are entering a zone with an enemy, so they draw another fatigue marker randomly. That's a zero. Um, and then there, and then there's one about. Um, well, I, I guess I'll read this. It doesn't apply here, but I don't think I've mentioned this before. You're going to draw an extra fatigue marker for, for each connection if the stack does not have a clear route from the connection where it is located to one of its lines of communication. Basically, it's isolated is, is, is what that is, but clearly not isolated here. So I add up the fatigue. It's only one. That is not going to hurt us. So I can put those back. Um, that's the movement. Now we can do the combat. Um, I will try this again. Um, a forced passage, again, is what they call it. If a stack enters a zone occupied by an enemy stack, like here, um, it must stop unless he carries out a forced passage. In this case, the combat must be resolved during the operation between the stacks of the zone. The attacker moves removes two from his combat. Yeah, he's going to have a minus two. We, we know that because that's on the uh, combat modifiers list. After the combat. Do, 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 do. So, is that it? That is it, actually. So, so.
So now I think I can go to... Now I think I can go to the normal combat sequence. So, um, turn the concerned units over. Okay, I think I can pull them out so they're closer here. Um, and I'll put my battle marker... Oh, again, I, I, I should record the amount of movement points used, but it's just one along the road. I don't think there are any extra. But since I can move afterwards, I should uh, record that. Put the battle marker in here. Um, take the... Here's another... Th well, well, I guess they're going to be activated. Oh, I forgot to write those guys anyways. Oh, I did, didn't I? <laughs> All right, so um, I'll straighten that out. Um, I'm going to flip them over. Um, and I guess after this, I'm not sure if there's any case where the Anglo allies would not be activated, so I guess it doesn't matter. Well, I don't know if it matters that they have or, or that they have not already activated. I don't know. Flip them over. One is, oh. No, not as Beresford, the commander. A <laughs> moment there, I thought it was only a cavalry. So here's a decoy. I guess we can... Still got to figure out what to do about that. So here's Beresford. So we have to pull Beresford's force from the Anglo-Allied off-map display. And that's... Boy, that's all messed up. Oops. I messed that up completely. So, I uh, guess I got to do a quick check of the rules to figure out which force started with Beresford. Um, figure out <laughs> what I'm doing there. Uh, Sult, Portugal, 1809. Uh, Beresford. Beresford has Tilson. Okay, there's Tilson. Um, Sousa. Um, Portuguese cavalry. Okay. Portuguese artillery. That, um, where's, who has so Silveria Paget? How did I? I messed that up. Well, in any case, I think... <laughs> wow. All right, I messed that up, but hey, it's just for fun. Um, uh, I think these... Well, we're going to say these four are with Beresford. <laughs> Oops. Does Beresford... Oh, Beresford has Sherbrooke. So I assume... I assume that that is Wellesley's force over there. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we'll say this is Beresford's force. So he has he has a mix as well. One cavalry, one artillery, and two infantry. Okay. Okay, and then we can flip our French forces over. We've already looked at them. Um, but two infantry, three artillery. Like that. So here are our opposing forces. Um... Okay, um, potentially withdraw cavalry. I think... All right, if, I'm not going to withdraw. I think that it... I think you cannot... Well, actually, I will verify that. I'm trying to remember if you can um, withdraw cavalry separately. Um, yeah, it, it's only when the stack is composed solely of cavalry. Uh, that's not the case here. Okay, so there's no withdrawal of cavalry before combat. Determine the amplitude of combat. And... That's funny. Okay, the detailed game sequence here doesn't include the determining the retreat directions. So where where was that? Um, was that supposed to be right when they entered? At the moment in which a stack enters a zone occupied. That's so it's so it's so it's almost like it's part of the movement. I, I do need to remember that. So. 
should be fairly obvious though. Yeah, the the French have their retreat back towards the. Oh yeah, it is. It is obvious. Um, they have theirs back the way they came, and the um, Anglo allies have south on the road behind them. Okay, so there isn't. So. It, so really, you don't even need to need to put those markers out, but yeah, yeah, you don't. Okay, but anyways, determine the axes of retreat. All right, so we pick up again. Determine the amplitude of combat. That that is what I need, and I think I guess I'll use the side display here. Okay. One, two, three, um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine on the um, French side, and then there's um, Til Tilson and D'Souza. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. So sixteen is the amplitude of combat. Which corresponds to the 16 to 20 um, column there on the amplitude of combat table, 16 to 20 column, which is where we'll get our both our losses and our uh, length of retreat. Okay. Um, play, we're not going to play any event markers. Um, no. Uh, carry out artillery. We are going to have artillery shots. I think this is um, simultaneous. Uh, so, but but you wanna you wanna record them too. But the um, oh the Anglo Allies have ones fifty fifty. They miss. I think you need three. Um, all right, I guess I should. Guess I should. Uh, four, five, or six. Yeah. So they miss. The French have three. Artillery. Ooh, they miss first one. Miss the second one, and they finally get one. All right, so I'll, I guess I'll, as a reminder, I guess I'll put the one over here to remind me. Um, so those are the artillery shots. Calculate the strength ratio. Okay, so again, it was was it uh, French was nine, uh, nine to seven. This is one to one. So I think it's. It's one for the stronger side. Does the French get a one? I think. Let's make that a two to remind me. Okay, now we determine the lead unit. Um, I guess we'll lead with, okay, Foy or Renault. Foy or Renault. Um, actually, I guess it could go either way. They look the same. So Renault will be the lead unit. Put him like that. Um... Head unit, as they call it in the rules. And then here we're going to... Uh, Tilson has a morale of 4. D'Souza has a morale of 3. Yeah, lead with the Brits, with the British. Tilson, like that. Okay, so we have our head units. Um, uh, okay, so modifiers. So... The amplitude of comment corresponds to sum. Okay, notate this total before calculating the CP. To calculate the CP of each of the players, move the counter of the chosen... Oh, so, there it is. That's the thing about Vivectus games. I've, I eventually find the rules somewhere. There it is. It's, it's, it's not always the easiest place, but it's there. So, yeah. So, we take our head unit. So, what I'm using is I'm using a display that looks like that. The, the boxes there goes from negative 5 to 22. What I'm using off to the side of the map is I'm just u I'm using the the same type of display that comes with volume 2. It just it goes up to 36 instead of just up to 22. Um, so that's what I'm saying. It's right off the, the screen here, just off the map here. Okay, so you do take the head unit to compute each side. So I guess I'll since the French already have plus two, I'll do the French first. Um, so there. So I guess they go to two because 
you start at zero. So add the modifiers of the event, no event markers. I added the artillery, uh, added the value of the strength ratio to the stronger stack. Um, add the morale of the head unit. Okay, so Renault, my head unit there has a morale of four. One, two, three, four. So I added the morale. Add the strategic value. The French have no commanders with the stack, so that's nothing. Add the defensive value of the zone to the defender only. That's angle allies. Subtract two if the stack has no... No, they have an axis of retreat. Um, you have a back to the river. Doesn't apply here. Subtract two because this is a force march. So I'm going back down two to four. And then subtract two if at least one unit of the stack is more, there's no demoralization. And then we add the value of 1d6. Ooh, they roll a six. That should be good. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So they wind off with a with a uh, combat strength or potential of a 10. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the angle allies, starting with Tilson, starting starting at zero. No events. Uh, they, they didn't get their artillery shot. Uh, they don't get the strength ratio. They do have the morale. Their morale, I believe, is 4-2. Tilson is 4-2. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So they go up to 4. They do have a strategic value. Uh, Beresford has a 1. So I'm adding 1 for Beresford. Defensive value. It is defensive terrain there. So they, they're adding 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. One, two, so up to seven. Um, they have an axis of retreat. They don't have back to the river. This is not a forced passage for them. They're not demoralized. And then, so it really comes down to a die roll here. Yes, it does. Which makes, ooh, see, they get a one. So they wind off at eight. So angle allies end off at eight. Um, the French had ten, so the difference is two. So again, there there is no die roll on the combat table, but the difference is two. Come across to the 16 to 20 column is one and one. And isn't that funny? One and one. I gotta figure out what to do here. And then the retreat is is one. So does that mean? That's funny. The winner's result is on the left. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. That the player with the greater number of CP is the winner of the combat. Oh, okay. So the French are the winners. But they lose one... Anyways, I guess. Well, let's see what the rules sauces are. are given on the combat table, cross-referencing the difference in CP with the amplitude of combat. Losses are applied freely, except, of course, the head unit is going to take the first loss. Okay, so I guess that that is enough. So Renault will take one loss, and then um, Tilson is also taking a loss. Okay, because I was one and one, and then the retreat of one. So I'll continue on with the um, resolve the melee, apply losses. I just did that. First goes to the head unit, carry out any retreats. So now the retreat distance for the losing stack is indicated. Okay, so it's easy enough. Um, Beresford and his force will retreat and then well I'll, I'll go and step here they retreat here one um, like that his force goes back to his display um, so carry it in retreats test the demoralization of the stack if there is a retreat uh, this is what I probably forgot last time uh, the retreats toward the zone containing the stack's retreat marker. That's what I just did there. Um, if there's no retreat zone, blah, 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 blah. Okay, demoralization. At the end of the retreat, the losing player rolls. All right, they roll a five. That's probably, is probably good. Um, 
Add the result of the value of the distance of retreat, so add 1, and compare the result of the morale of the head unit. If the result is greater than its morale, the stack becomes, ooh, no, so high is not good. Okay, so the, mor the morale of the head unit after the combat is 3. So 5 plus 1 for a retreat of 1 is 6. A 6 is definitely greater than the morale. The stack does become demoralized. A demoralized marker is placed on top. So we do have our first demoralization there. And then carry out potential pursuit. I know I could probably do that, but I'm not going to look at pursuit yet. I know I probably should. Um, place the markers, has combated on any stacks with a non-activated status. A defeated stack becomes automatically activated. That sounds strange. Uh, might have missed something here. Might have missed something. Um, and there, 